Kev Central is now 50,000 subscribers strong and growing daily. And I want to thank each and every one of you for being a part of the channel. The 50k Q&A is going to be coming soon, so make sure you get your questions submitted in the community tab here on YouTube. I'll put a link below in the description, but today I'm going to do a bike check. I like to do two of these a year, and it's been over six months since I made the last one, so here's a chance for my longtime viewers to see how the stable has evolved, and for new subscribers to get a look at the current Kev Central bike lineup. And then something more, so hold on for that, but now let's get to the bikes, and there are a few, so let's count them off together. Number one is my Vinton Quixote, my only gravel bike, which is fittingly Kev Central Orange. Even though it has drop bars, I still like the bike. It's well made, and oh, by the way, there are links to my reviews for all these bikes down in the description, but as far as the Quixote goes, my only real complaint is that on gravel, you know, that kicks up a lot of dust, and that all seems to go right to that rear brake, which gets noisy and requires regular cleaning. Two is the Mongoose Salvo Pro, which is quite possibly the most misunderstood bike that I've reviewed thus far. I really like the bike and enjoy riding it, but for some reason, people seem to think that my enjoyment for the ride was me implying that it was a good cost versus value at the 2K price point. Not at all what I was saying, but we'll cover that in another video, so for now, let's move on. Three's another mongoose, and this one may have been your introduction to this channel. It's the XR Pro. Not just an XR Pro, but Project XR. And Project XR is all but ready for its shootout later this summer with the next bike. Number four, the Hyper Hydroform, or Project Hydro. Now, I put a lot of time and money into this bike, and I've been quite pleased with the results, and I can't wait to see how it does versus Project XR. Number five is another Hyper and another Project bike, Project X, built on the Hyper Carbon X. It's on the bike stand because there's some slight tweaks to the Project X build that should be soon complete, so stay tuned for more new Carbon X content. Number six is my most expensive bike by far, and also the most trail grippy and bump smoothing bike in my inventory, the Cannondale Trigger 3. She's a beauty, and has almost as much in upgrades as the base bike costs. I think all complete, it's well worth the expenditure. Number seven's also a Cannondale, and this one's a Lefty from 2006. It's a Rush 3000, and other than the Lefty fork, there are lots of other things that make this stand out, like the USA-made quality, the smooth welds, and even the graphics. Look how they react to light. Eight is another Mongoose, and this is my only fat tire bike. It's the Mongoose Malice. And it's not a project bike, but I have done a few upgrades that I think made it better. Who doesn't love fat wheels and tires? And number nine, that isn't a fat tire bike, but it's the next closest thing, a 27.5 plus. It's another Mongoose. This is the Ripsaw. It's another fun bike to ride, though this one does get a little bit rough, what with the rigid fork. Overall, it's a good component package, and with the addition of oversized foam grips, it's more comfortable now. 10, well, that's a 27.5 plus too. And this one's from Dick's Sporting Goods. It's the Nishiki Colorado Comp. Now, these were a stellar deal last year, and probably one of the best bangs per buck in all of biking last year, at least for budget big box bikes. Sadly, now they've disappeared from the Dick's Sporting Goods website. I mean, maybe they'll be back, but, but for now, all I can do is put the parts back on this one, so at least there's another one back in action. 11 is the Eternal Project. It's one that I haven't done anything with. The Huffy Cranbrook. It's slated to be a gas-powered bike, but that got put on hold, but now that I've got the floor ready on the bike barn, maybe I'll get around to finally making something happen. Number 12 is a bike that I forgot I had, the Cycle Kids Embark, and I really like this bike. It's well made, but the branding is a bit deceptive, because it's more of a Raleigh Redux-esque urban assault bike than anything. Now that I've rediscovered it, I'll get it back on the road soon. Number 13 is the State Bicycle Company Monk Core 3, which is a true simplistic beauty, and it's only on this rack because of the work being done on the bike barn. Soon it'll be off it and back in its spot. Next to it, number 14 is the old Schwinn Cutback. Once upon a time, a true Walmart bike value, but no longer available. Upgraded, it's quite usable, but it's on the bubble to be sold. 15 is sitting on the dark side of the basement. I'm having some light work done there. It's the Pure Cycles Urban Commuter. This will soon be put to use on a bike trainer stand to help me compensate for my e-bike induced lack of fitness. So I guess it's only fitting that the next bike at number 16 is my first e-bike, the Anchir Power Plus. People ask me about this bike regularly and it's still working fine, though admittedly I don't ride it as much since my last round of e-bikes are higher up on the e-bike scale, but the Anchir is hanging in there. At 17 is a popular bike here on Kev Central. It's the Schwinn Aluminum Comp, one of the best Walmart starter bikes in my opinion. I added a few budget upgrades and the bike's usefulness increased considerably, so we'll see what it can do if we move it to the next level with future upgrades, so stay tuned. 
18 is the $30 Kent Bayside I bought on clearance, kind of an impulse purchase, but I have a project in mind for this, so soon it'll be doing more than being a floor mat holder. 19 is my first real commuter bike and my introduction to an amazing bike brand, Priority. This is the Priority Continual Monix. It's also my first Gates carbon drive bike, my first Nuvinci CVT internally geared hub bike. Gotta love that Nuvinci CVT shifter. Also my first bike that could create its own electrical power to run lights. And it started a run, which continues at 20 with Priority's high-end bike, the All-Road 600. Named for the 600% gear range from the Porsche engineer designed pinion gearbox, I've had zero issues with the 600 and I don't expect any for, oh, say the next 10,000 or so miles when I'll need to change the gearbox oil. 21 is my other, other Priority bike and I call this one my mule because it's still my choice for short, under one mile errands has a Gates Belt Drive, a Nexus 3-speed internally geared hub, and an incredibly useful front rack. The Classic Plus Gotham Edition, it's a doer. 22 is the reason that my fitness level is at zero. It's the Electric XP, a bike that generates lots of interest and lots of questions, both on Kev Central and out in public. Riding the XP is so overly fun that unless it's a very short run, I struggle to force myself to grab another bike, because I'm always wanting to be on the XP, it's such effortless joy. And that's about to step up a notch or two, because they sent me a new computer and speed controller, so 28 miles per hour here I come, unless they sent me one of their beta computers, in which case maybe 35 miles per hour here I come. So stay tuned for the upgrade and follow up video, and you can share in the experience. See what I did there? 23 is the IKEA bike the Ikea Slada. It's more of a work of art than anything, though it's been recalled and no longer available, but I kept mine. Though recently a collector's been trying to get me to part with it, so we'll see. 24 is a Swin that you'll soon see, but for now this is going to be the only glimpse you get. 25 is my Stranger Things fix. The Max Bike, upcoming in Season 3. And this is the official hang tag, I don't think I showed that in the original video. It's going to be on sale at Target soon, radio not included. Season 3 is coming soon too, and I can't wait. 26 is the Event and Pace 500 e-bike. It's commuter and cruiser styling with a fair amount of power. It's also well made and expect an upcoming video where I give it some Kev Central treatment to make it more my style. I ran out of room so you may have noticed 25 and 26 aren't even at my house. Neither are 27 and 28. And these are so far removed at the moment that I have to go pick them up now that the bike barn's back in action. 27 is my Riley Redux 3 and 28 is my brilliant L-Train. Both beautiful bikes. 29, however, is not beautiful, and it's the final bike on the list. It's also relegated to the back lot of some family property where it's waiting on its fate. It's the Pacific Evolution. So that's my current bike lineup. I hope you enjoyed that, but remember, I titled this video, And More. Well, here's the more, and this is for all of those that have wanted a Kev Central sticker, and this time there's no competition. You can get your very own for free just by sending a self-addressed stamped envelope to Kev Central, P.O. Box 3484, Florence, Alabama 35630. Put your self-addressed envelope inside that envelope. Don't forget the stamp, and I'll return it with a free sticker inside. Super easy, so get them while you can. Just a little thank you for being part of the first 50,000. Now let's get the channel to 100,000 so we can turn it up another notch. So spread the word, and get your envelope in the mail so you can impress everyone with your Kev Central sticker. It's the newest design, too. Thanks again for watching this video and for helping me get to 50k. I'll have the question and answers video coming in the next week or so. Most importantly, have a great day.